Ever since NAB 2024, one of the talks of the towns in terms of cinema cameras is the Ursa Cine 12K, but also the Ursa Cine 17K. Both of these cameras are catching a lot of cinematographers' attentions, including world-renowned famous cinematographer Greg Frazier, who DP'd Rogue One, uh, the Batman, as well as Dune. Today, I'm going to be talking about the sensors that are inside both the Ursa City 12K and the Ursa City 17K, because there's still a lot of talk about who needs 12K. Why do you need 12K? The, the number of resolutions sounds ridiculous, but it's actually not that ridiculous. In, in, in this very specific case, it's actually, a 12K is actually needed. Today I'm going to talk about why does these cameras need 12K, what is the reasons that they chose to go with 12K, as well as would we potentially see the sensor that is in the Ursa Cine 12K and the Ursa 17K in a camera like the Pixis. All that and more in today's video. What's going on everybody? My name is James Jackson. If you're new here, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if this is content that you like, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. So let's talk about the Ursa Cine 12K and 17K. Now the Ursa City 12K has been out for quite a while. We've actually got lab tests and a lot of testings around it. And the imaging and the test results that are coming out are quite impressive. The long story short of it is the Ursa City 12K is the second best full frame dynamic range performing camera, second to only the Ari Alexa LF. And in terms of readout speed, it is the second best performing full frame cinema camera, second only to the Sony Venice 2. These are now numbers that are now been proven by City D as, and numbers that have been, you know, brought to us by Blackmagic Design as well when they've released a lot of their specs. So kudos to Blackmagic for giving us, giving us basically honest, you know, results and not inflating it like so many other camera companies have. And all of this has to do with that sensor that is in the Cine 12K, which is also the same sensor in the Ursa Cine 17K. It's just the Ursa 17K is 30% bigger with its 65 millimeter uh, f format. Now, this isn't the first RGBW sensor that Blackmagic has produced. They also made another camera, the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, which also has an RGBW sensor. And the reason why it performs as well is because it has that luminance that can help you with getting out the most dynamic range. But the thing that has always pulled back and sort of made, it's been the butt of jokes for a lot of people on content that say these cameras are ridiculous and nobody really needs cameras of this is the fact that they got that 12K on it. Because the question is, who needs 12K? And... In terms of individuals that may need 12K, yes, you got visual effects artists that may want that because higher resolution is just better for them. However, let, let to be yes, to be honest, 12K for individual use case is not necessary. However, for this for these specific cameras that have this RGBW sensor, especially this specific RGBW sensor that Blackmagic has designed. 12K is actually quite necessary in order for them to deliver 4K. Now, you're probably sitting there confused like, wait, what? I need 12K resolution in order to deliver 4K? How does that make any sense? Well, this all goes down to more of the technological way in the design and how RGB sensors work. Most sensors are what is called a Bayer pattern sensor, meaning they have one red, one blue, and two green. And that's sort of how the sensors are made up per pixels. And they take up most of that, and that's how you get these resolutions and outputs and how it puts out true four color, even though it may be a little bit higher resolution to get like true 4K color. An RGB sensor uses one red, one green, one blue, and then one white, mainly for luminance. Now, Blackmagic specifically chose this 
because of the benefits that an RGBW sensor provides. The main benefit is, is that for every single pixel, you have the exact same red, the exact same green, and the exact same blue, which means it actually makes scaling or downsampling to different resolutions that of, of the similar aspect ratio or the similar uh, square inch, I guess, square root, I guess you could say, but that have, that are basically symmetric to one another. It means that you can downsample to those lower resolutions without taking a hit in terms of cropping, in terms of uh, image quality, very little image quality, and also very little dynamic range image quality. Now you do take a, a little bit of a dynamic range, but as we've seen from the results from CineD, you're losing maybe a half a stop, which is nothing in all honesty. And then, and so that's what you do, take and you don't lose, but you also gain faster readout speeds, you gain fat, higher frame rates in those lower resolutions. Because the way Blackmagic designed the sensor, all of this processing is actually happening at the sensor level thanks to Blackmagic RAW. And so it does all this before it hits the processor, which typically Bayer padded sensors actually have to go through the processor first, and which is why most Bayer padded sensors, when you try to oversample, they can never do higher frame rates than what the, the highest resolutions is capable of, unless you crop in. And that's when you can get higher frame rates and higher things. You don't lose any of that, but you don't lose any of that with an RGBW sensor when you can scale down. Now, there is a significant downside to RGBW sensors, and that is they have significantly less color output or color channels per pixel than Bayer patterned sensors. So because of that, you actually will not get a true 4K image when you shoot at 4K if the, if the full resolution of the sensor was just 4K. In fact, you are most likely to see color and digital artifacts on the camera itself when you're viewing it because the channels are not out there for to able to deliver 4K. So how was Blackmagic able to resolve this? Well, they look to going back to old school and looking at old beta cameras. And the way they used to work was that they would have three sensors, one red, one green, one blue, and they would all go through a prism into which they would get the full color reproductivity. And that's essentially what Blackmagic is doing, but in a digital format. In this case, they're going three times the resolution in order to get the color information needed for all three color channels. And so when you downsample in camera to 4K or you take 12K and you put it on a 4K timeline, you're getting the true full 4K image. And it wasn't so they could flex and say how much resolution they could pop out. It was so that they could get a true 4K image for 4K delivery. So doesn't matter which resolution in terms of those you pick, you get the 12K, the 8K, or the 4K. It's all being downsampled from that 12K imagery. So you're still getting true full color even if you're shooting at 4K but you still get all the benefits, which is sensor scaling, oversampling, as well as the color reproductivity. Case in point, if you actually go and look at Pro AV TV's cover of the Ursa City 12K, you actually see that there's actually more details in the 4K image of the Ursa City 12K than there is of the Blackmagic Pixis at 6K, which is crazy to think about. And the same methodology is applied to the Ursa Cine 17K, which is why do we need 17K? Well, it is the resolution needed that if you were to deliver, in this case, it's about a 5.5K delivery, or if you were to deliver on a 4, 4K timeline for this type of imagery, that this is the resolution needed for that 4K delivery on a 65 millimeter format. Now the question that I wanna to try to ask is, would we ever see this sensor, the RGBW sensor in a Pixis body? It, I'm, look, nothing is, pos nothing is impossible, but there's a lot of challenges to put a sensor like that in a Pixis body. Number one, it has to be 12K. So I know there's been talk this, well, maybe we could get the RGB sensor, but it's only like 8K or maybe 6K only. 
No, it would have to be 12K in order for it to be able to shoot and deliver 4K imagery, as we mentioned already, which means it's going to generate quite a bit of heat and a lot of processing power that is going to be needed. And also you gotta think, well, you gotta think of the medias who write about it. Now, the Ursa City 12K and the 17K, they have the proprietary media that comes with the camera when you buy it. Blackmagic is um, currently building a CF Express Type B uh, solution for that. So if they do deliver that and it seems, and they can get the kinks out of that, it is possible that maybe with a CF Express Type B option that you could get an RGB W's uh, 12K sensor on that. Blackmagic has also been very, very clear that doing going CF Express Type B would limit the options you will you be able to shoot. And I believe the limitation is you can't do anything above 60 frames a second. So if we do see a 12K sensor camera, Pixis version, it's gonna just to enable to sort of keep the body to a certain similar size, it's probably going to have to be um, limited to 60 frames a second. So 4K 60 frames a second would probably be the most that it could offer. And would that be enough? Uh, I would love to know what you guys think. Would that be enough for you that just for uh, either shoot 12K up to 60, 8K up to 60, uh, but no 4K 120 options? Because that's essentially what you would need in order to do to use this type of sensor technology. The trade-off would be you could potentially get a significant dynamic range boost and uh, much more detail and fine color fidelity uh, image. So that would be the trade-off. You would get a higher dynamic range, higher detail, higher color fidelity image, but you would only be able to shoot the camera in 60 frames a second. Now, for me personally, I think there is a potential buying uh, option for that. The only thing is it's like how much bigger does the body need to be in order to make sure it could dissipate enough heat so the camera doesn't overload or doesn't run into any issues before. Anyways, these are my thoughts on this and I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know, leave your comments down below. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care everyone.